Hi everyone. I am going to make almond milk. Um, this is my second video on almond milk. I like making it so much. Um, to make this large container full, which makes about seven cups, holds seven cups, I'm going to show you the recipe now, okay? So it's about four to six dates pitted. You take the pits out. Um, four teaspoons of vanilla, or one tablespoon plus one teaspoon, and two or three pinches of Himalayan salt. Now, I've taken my Himalayan salt, and I've mixed it with a little bit of uh, sea salt, but you can use any kind of salt, I guess. And the dates I use are medjool dates. They are soft and plump. Um, I like them really sweet and soft, not the other kind that are hard, but these are really nice. So what I've done is, because my blender cannot take all seven cups of water when it's whipped up, I put three and a half cups in here, and I put three and a half cups in my pan just to hold it. You could use a bowl. And then I take my uh, two dates or two and a half dates in there, two and a half dates in here, two teaspoons of vanilla here, two teaspoons of vanilla there, pinches of salt, pinches of salt, and that part is done. Now, the almonds I use, when they're dry, these have been soaked. These have been soaked for about five or six hours. A minimum, you want three hours. The longer they soak, the absolute more creamier your, your almond milk will get. Now, when I filled this cup with raw almond, I did one and three quarter cups. But when it swells, what you do is you put it in your bowl and you pour hot water, not boiling, but almost, it's like simmering, but not boiling. You pour hot water over the almonds and you let them soak for hours. I say three hours minimum, the longer the better. Then I rinse them off really good through the strainer. So these are already pre-soaked and it will yield three cups once they're swollen up and uh, soaked with water. The skins should slide off super easy. You want to make the almond milk with the skins. Oops, I lost that one. Um, you want to make the almond milk with the skin on because that actually helps the body of the milk and keeps the milk um, together. So now what I'm going to do is take half of that, which is about uh, one and a half cups. I'm going to take that and put that in the blender because remember, it's one and three quarter cups, but once it swells up, um, you're going to yield about three cups of almonds. So I'll take, oh, about like that, and then my other cup and a half is there. And now we're going to start the almond milk. Um, the recipe is super, super simple, and it comes out great. In fact, I made these almond pulp cookies, which I have in another video. Um, the recipe, I'll try to put it down, the link down below in the, in the description. So here we go, and I turn on pulse really slow a couple times, boom, 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 just to get it started so it won't squirt out the top or um, anything. And I start the pulse off on the little bit of the lower speed to chop up all the dates and stuff that have uh, sunk down there. So we're going to do that. I won't leave the the blender on for the whole time. It'll probably be about seven minutes total, depending on how soft the nuts are, but here we go. Pulse, pulse. Okay, and here we go. We're going to have the magic happen now. It's going to be so nice and creamy. While you have the blender going, you can get your larger bowl out and your milk nut bag. Now this is one I got on Amazon. The mesh is very, very fine and it works perfectly for filtering out the, um, the pulp when you're um, straining your milk. Okay, we are about halfway, three minutes into the mixing uh, cycle. Now what you can see is you have some suspension, which is really good because you want to be able to get those almonds so ground up that they form really thick milk and this um, almond skin will float. See that? Um, the particles are small, which is good. We didn't want big chunks in there. And now I'm going to put it on for three more minutes, which will be about, so you know, so it depends. You could do five to seven minutes, but I like doing it a lot because I like to get as much creamy thickness in my almond milk as possible. Okay, so here we go again. <laughs> 
Okay. Now you can see why I only add three to three and a half cups of water because by the time you get everything whipped up, this thing is blending woo on high speed and there's no room for anything more. So I had to divide the recipe in half to get it all in this um, blender for, for this size bottle. Okay, so now you can see to most of it's totally suspended. There's very little movement up here. It's nice and thick. We got a nice layer of cream already starting. So this is perfect for me to strain. Um, I'm going to pour it into the bag. I have one hand working on this right now, so give me a second and I will pour it in there and come back. Okay, I got my phone leaned on a bowl, so uh, I hope it works and doesn't fall over while I demonstrate this. So now I'm going to take this wonderful yummy stuff and pour it into the milk bag. All that wonderful stuff there. Look at that. All right. And now um, I'm going to begin straining this. Okay. So what I normally do is I'll start to squeeze the bag and put all of this in there, all of that in there which is a repeat of the first recipe and I will run that while I am working the bag but because I don't want to hurt your ears I'm gonna go ahead and get the bowl over here I'm gonna go ahead and do this uh, without the blender running okay um, so what I do is pick up the milk bag now there's a couple things you can do you can actually um, just start you can start squeezing the milk bag, tourniqueting it down as you go. Is that in there? Okay. Um, what I do is I take a big spoon. My husband came up with this tourniquet idea. And I wrap it around the wooden spoon, the bag. Okay. And then I just take that string from the bag. Give it a little wrap like that. And then I begin winding it and turning it. And so we're seeing all this wonderful milk pour right out into that bowl. I like to strain extremely tight. I like to get this so that the pulp is almost bone dry, just really dry uh, for my recipe. So I'm going to do this, milk this out, keep turning and keep squeezing. Look at that. Make sure your hands are scrupulously clean, okay? We'll keep doing that till that thing is drained. Okay, so there it is, and there's the pulp. I like the pulp to be really dry, real crumbly. This will not have any milk at the bottom of it in the morning. I save it, I refrigerate it, and I make cookies, and I make banana and up bread, and all kinds of fun stuff. So save your pulp, guys. It's good. Now I'm going to do the same thing in the blender and by that time the milk should be all the way up here. I'll come back in a minute. Okay, second batch is getting ready to go. Okay, I've got the almond milk. The second batch is done in the bowl. I've taken the almond pulp I've cleaned my bag, converted it inside out. By the way, we use filtered water um, to make the almond milk. And now I'm going to put it in the, in the uh, glass container. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Keep in mind, it will settle and separate. That is absolutely normal for any kind of natural milk. And I'll just keep scooping this in and I'll come back in a second. And there it is. Now, I'm going to let it sit overnight, and I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. Okay, here's some almond milk that I made yesterday. And you can see it naturally settles. Um, but uh, what I want to show you is amazing. Look how wonderful the cream on the top is, just like real milk. That is amazing. The recipe, the full recipe for this size is... is um, on the video 
for the ingredients down below, um, there's two different recipes. So you'll see it in the description. Now I'm mixing, because today what I'm making with this almond milk is I'm making waffles. But the full almond milk recipe is going to be um, down in the description. Anyway, enjoy.